Hi, welcome to the podcast for When the Curves Line Up for November 29th, 2023. Please see the article that includes diagrams of today's events on the website at whenthecurveslineup.com. Hi, this is Jeffrey Hunt for When the Curves Line Up. In Chicago, sunrise occurs at 6.56 a.m. Central Standard Time, followed by sunset at 4.21 p.m. Here is today's planet forecast. In the morning sky, an hour before sunrise, brilliant Venus passes 4.2 degrees to the upper left of Spica in a widely spaced conjunction. Venus is stepping eastward in front of Virgo, passing the constellation's brightest star this morning. Venus is nearly 90 million miles from Earth, but Spica is over 16 million times farther away. Spica shines with a brightness of 1,900 suns. It is the tenth brightest star visible from the mid-northern latitudes. This morning, nine of the ten are in the sky. In order of brightness and not including Venus, they are Sirius, Arcturus, Vega, Capella, Rigel, Procyon, Betelgeuse, Aldebaran, and Spica. Altair is the ninth brightest star. It appears in the evening sky and makes morning appearances beginning early January 2024. But by then, Sirius, Rigel, Betelgeuse, and Aldebaran are no longer in the sky in the morning. This morning, farther westward, the bright moon, 95% illuminated, is less than halfway up in the sky in the west. The bull's horns, Elnath and Zeta Tauri, are to the lower right of the lunar orb. The bovine's eye, Aldebaran, is about 25 degrees to the moon's lower right. This morning, the moon is 6.3 degrees to the right of Tejat Posterior, Castor's heel. A binocular is needed to see the star in this moonlight. Do not confuse this star with Alhina, meaning the brand mark is to the lower left and nearly twice Tejet Posterior's lunar separation. Alhina is nearly twice as bright as this comparison star. A star cluster cataloged as Messier 35 is in the same binocular field of view with Tejet Posterior and the lunar orb. Notice the star Propus, the toe, 2.2 degrees to the left of the stellar bundle. Once the cluster is found, move the binocular slightly to the left to remove the moon's glare. This should be noted that through the binocular, the moon can leave a temporary afterimage in human vision, like that from a camera flash, when one sees spots. The star cluster is similar to the Pleiades star cluster in Taurus. The Gemini cluster is about seven times farther away than the Seven Sister and appears dimmer and smaller. It serves as a milestone along the ecliptic, The moon passes by each month and the bright planets visit regularly. The views of the cluster with the moon are easier each month through spring as the moon phase is thinner through May 2024. On May 10th, at an hour after nightfall, the waxing crescent moon and the star cluster nicely fit into a binocular field 5.3 degrees apart. This morning, Venus rises about 15 minutes short of four hours before daybreak, 45 minutes later, Earth's twin planet is low in the east-southeast and Jupiter is near the west horizon. Both shine through the haze near the horizon, although they are somewhat dimmer. They are approaching their opposition December 10th when Jupiter sets as Venus rises. This morning, the gap between them is 170 degrees. The outer planet's oppositions with Venus in the morning sky indicate the last date that the two planets are in the sky simultaneously. Venus steps eastward quickly and widens the gap between them. When the opposition occurs in the evening sky, this occurs that the two planets are again visible together until Venus disappears into evening twilight, racing toward inferior conjunction between Earth and Sun. This morning, Mars rises 15 minutes before the Sun, not yet visible in the eastern sky during morning twilight. In the evening sky, Mercury continues a seemingly arduous climb 
into the western evening sky for northern hemisphere sky watchers. This evening the planet is nearly 10 degrees up in the southwest at sundown. It is bright so try to catch a glimpse of it through a binocular when it is over 5 degrees above the horizon at 30 minutes after sunset. At one hour after sundown, Saturn is in the southern sky over 35 degrees above the horizon. The planet is slowly plodding eastward in front of Aquarius, 7.3 degrees to the upper left of Deneb Algidi, Capricornus tail. The planet and the star may still fit in the same field of view in a binocular, but not for many more nights. The planet is generally heading towards Skate, the Aquarian's leg, and Lambda Aquarii. Farther eastward, bright Jupiter is nearly 30 degrees up in the east. It retrogrades in front of Aries, 11.3 degrees, to the lower right of Hamel, the ram's brightest star, and 13.4 degrees above Menkar, Cetus Nostril. The planet is noticeably west of an imaginary line between the two stars. Retrograde continues until year's end. The moon, 92% illuminated, rises nearly two hours after sundown. Two hours later, it is over 20 degrees above the east-northeast horizon. It is in front of Gemini, to the right of the twins, Castor and Pollux. At this hour, Saturn is over 20 degrees above the southwest horizon, and Jupiter is high in the southeast. The ringed wonder sets six hours after sundown and before midnight. Jupiter, setting over two hours before sunup, is in the western sky when Venus rises tomorrow. During morning twilight, the moon is about halfway up in the west, below the twins. Thank you for listening. Please read the articles at whenthecurveslineup.com.